Thus saith the Lord, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me, and I will hearken unto you, and I will bring you in your captivity from every nation. Lord, thou art become gracious unto thy land, I hast turned away the captivity of Jacob. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, for ever and ever. Thus saith the Lord, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace, and not of affliction. You shall call upon me, and I will hearken unto you. I will bring again your captivity from every nation. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Mighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, to whom most sacred thy head. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord be God on high, and on earth be stood well towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God of Father Almighty. O Lord, the only God of Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the blessed Son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the sons of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure. That when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like unto him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Where with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, we live in the reign forever, one God, world well without end. Amen. Let's pray. Defend us who receive your Lord from all perils of mind and body. And the intercession of the blessed glorious Mary, the ever virgin mother of God, a blessed Joseph, of my blessed apostles Peter and Paul, a blessed Aidan, and of all saints, grace that bestow upon us both peace and safety, that all adversity and error being done away, that church may serve thee in our noble freedom. O my, my God, we have been before thee, thy faithful servant Jane. We pray thee, having opened to her the gates of a larger light, thou wilt receive her more and more into thy joyful service, that she may win with thee and thy servants everywhere the eternal victory through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who live in the reign of thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever, one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Here begins the epistle in the third chapter of Blessed Apostle John's first letter. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall, we shall be. But we knew that when he shall appear, we should be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, 
and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Lord children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. It is now, O Lord, who saves us from our enemies and put us into confusion and hate us. We make our boast in God all day long. We'll praise thy name forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. <clears throat> of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Bible study is available today. And I, some of you already knew this, of course, but when I put the bottom of the bulletin about 
Trinity 5 and Epiphany 6, and why are we using the prophets for Epiphany 6? Well, first answer is there's no uh, Trinity 25 in the prayer book. So, sort of a, I don't want to say it's a trick, but um, anyway, that's the way they set it up. So, not a big deal, but you know, inquiring minds want to know. <clears throat> Wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Come, Holy Ghost, and kindle in the hearts of thy faithful people the fire of thy love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The eagles, an eagle with its piercing eyes, stands for courage and strength. In ancient Rome, it was a very symbol of power, and the messenger for the highest gods. One of our many beautiful hymns, 549, has a stirring line speaking of the young martyr Stephen. The martyr first, whose eagle eye could pierce beyond the grave. The eagle was chosen in 1782 as the emblem of our nation because of its long life, great strength, and majestic looks. Great seal of our nation depicts a bald eagle, eagle holding 13 olive branches and one talon. Eagles there, talons, not paws. And 13 arrows in the other. Now the olive branch stands for the power to make peace, while the arrows stand for the power to make war. Now we, while we tend to emphasize the power and fierceness of the eagle, it's also known for the tenderness it shows toward its young. The lifespan of an eagle is 20 to 30 years, while that of a housefly is supposedly only 28 days. Although I feel I've had the same fly following me around for three months now, and I've even given him a name, and that, believe me, that is not a name which is above every other name. Isaiah speaks of eagles as a symbol of God's faithful people. And here's one of the most stirring verses in Scripture from Isaiah. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Well, that's reassurance. The eagle dwells on the rock, as Job says, with Christ, who is our spiritual rock of ages. Just as in Exodus, Moses is given water from the physical rock. In today's gospel reading, which is a most sobering one, we have our Lord's promise to return. Now, all the speculation rampant throughout the centuries about the timing of that return. Calculations can never be more than just so much idle chatter. But the revelation of John, as much a part of the Bible as any other of its books, is correct. The return of Christ on the day of the Lord God Almighty will be preceded by the rollout of the Antichrist in his reign will feature the great tribulation of seven years. As surely as our Lord says in today's gospel reading that all the false prophets, the false Christ, will culminate, culminate in this one embodiment of evil. Now at the last judgment, Christ will be the body around which the eagles, that is the faithful, led by the apostles and martyrs, will gather. Christ on the cross was pierced in his side with a spear after he had died. Now the Hebrew word for slain can be translated as pierced to death. So Christ became a carcass, a carcass, a corpse, until his resurrection. Now after the resurrection and entrance into Galilee, the eagles, that is the apostles, and others of the faithful, at one time, at one point, 
time, 500 at once, gathered around the now risen Christ as they will when he comes again. Today, we know that our odds of salvation are rated by various handicaps. We have screaming televangelists with one hand on the Bible and the other reaching for our money. Warning that the most of us are going to hell, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, some think this is amusing. And I have to say this, there was a famous song in the 1980s by the Grateful Dead. It's a great video on YouTube. The line is, I may be going to hell in a bucket, babe, but at least I'm enjoying the ride. Ride. Other experts joyfully proclaim, you're all going to heaven. Don't worry about it. You'll be taken care of. Well, uh, yeah, but by whom? I, for one, don't want to take that chance. John the Revelator tells us that in heaven he saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. Slain, the spear, the carcass, the eagles, it all ties together. One side of the cross appears in the sky, as it did for Constantine, followed by our Lord's glorious appearing. Man's options will be over. That's it. No more chances. We all have chances. And as C.S. Lewis puts it in his The Case for Christianity, this time it will be God without disguise. Something so overwhelming that it will strike either irresistible love or irresistible horror into every creature. It will be too late then to choose your side. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Out of the deep end, I call unto thee, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Things come to thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Wash my hands and let me in. 
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. <laughs> Christ Jesus came into the world 
and save sinners. Here also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, for the precious death and merits of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and for the sending to us of the Holy Ghost, the Governor, who are one with thee in thy eternal Godhead. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, most high and highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For the doubt of thy tender mercy is give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and to institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. The night for you to be great and to bread. When he gave it thanks, he break it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Now as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated to the Lord, Father, and people of the past, present, and come. Happy intercession of us, Lord. Jesus Christ, thy sorrow, Lord, who with thee is going to keep the Holy Ghost, live in the reign of God, will without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this night's table, merciful the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our man called in great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the thrones of the night's table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is all of your mercy. And us, therefore, gracious Lord, so we shall 